Federal, state, and local agencies all share responsibility for ensuring that food processors follow food safety laws and regulations. The goal of these laws and regulations is to protect the public by ensuring that food processors produce safe food. There are a number of tools available to help sprouters comply with the law and produce safer sprouts. These tools include regulations and government guidance, as well as voluntary programs developed by sprouters themselves. In this module, we will discuss in depth the requirements and guidance for sprouters and clarify and define many of the terms and definitions surrounding existing laws and regulations. At times, the abbreviations for these tools may sound a little like alphabet soup. For clarification, each tool is identified in this table as a law or regulation, a guideline, or a voluntary program. Laws or regulations are the legal requirements that should be followed. Guidelines are government recommendations, often suggesting how the government believes you can best comply with laws and regulations. As the name implies, voluntary programs are completely voluntary. In many cases, voluntary programs developed by food industry or grower associations have served as guidance for their members. While government guidelines and voluntary programs are not mandatory, they should be carefully considered as they are excellent resources for the implementation of food safety programs and sometimes on ways to comply with legal requirements. Local, state, and or federal government public health agencies may inspect a sprout facility. Federal regulators have jurisdiction over products that move across state lines, otherwise known as interstate commerce. State regulators may adopt federal requirements in their own state laws. Some states have adopted requirements that should be met in addition to federal requirements. Sprouters should comply with all existing state and federal laws and regulations that apply to food establishments. The first of these is the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, which is sometimes referred to as the FDNC Act, or simply the Act. The Act fits into the table under laws and regulations. The Act is the legal authority for food inspection in the United States. The Act was introduced nearly a century ago to protect public health. It also creates a level playing field for the food industry. Sprouts are food. The Act prohibits the sale of adulterated food. In the words of the Act, food is considered adulterated if it contains any poisonous or deleterious substance which may render it injurious to health, Section 402A, if it consists of any filthy, putrid, or decomposed substance, or is unfit for food, Section 402A, or if it has been prepared, packed, or held under insanitary conditions whereby it may have become contaminated with filth or rendered injurious to health, Section 402A. In other words, the sale of adulterated food is illegal. Adulterated food is defined as any food containing a pathogen such as Salmonella, E. coli 0157H7, or any other harmful substance. Foods that are spoiled or that are prepared using spoiled food or foods that are contaminated with insects, rodents, or other types of filth are considered to be adulterated. High quality food prepared or stored in a dirty environment or handled by workers with poor personal hygiene is also adulterated because these conditions greatly increase the likelihood that the food may become contaminated with harmful substances. When food is adulterated, regulators have tools that they use to address the problem. In some cases, they may ask the firm to voluntarily make the appropriate corrections. Sometimes the regulator will send a warning letter to the firm in other cases, the product may be seized. A seized product cannot be sold unless the court releases it. Finally, in serious cases, the regulators may file an injunction to stop the firm from producing food or they may prosecute the responsible persons, typically the facility manager or owners. GMPs are also regulations. GMPs are short for Good Manufacturing Practice in Manufacturing, Packing, or Holding Human Food. These regulations can be found in Part 110 of Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations. The GMPs were developed with input from the food industry to ensure that processed food is produced under conditions that meet minimum food safety standards. A copy of the current good manufacturing practices in manufacturing, packing, or holding human food is provided in your materials. A complete copy can be obtained by ordering at 1-202-512-1716 or downloading from the FDA website at www.fda.gov. The GMPs for Food Part 110 are comprised of several subparts, which include general provisions, buildings and facilities, equipment, production and process controls, and defect action levels. 
Section 110.10 of the GMP describes the requirements for personnel education and training. This section emphasizes the need for adequate employee training in proper food handling and food protection. It includes identifying the dangers of insanitary practices and poor personal cleanliness and how these practices can lead to consumer and employee illnesses. The responsibility for ensuring adequate training of employees should be assigned to competent supervisory personnel. Supervisors and managers are also responsible for ensuring that employees adhere to all of the requirements of good manufacturing practices. Facility construction and design are discussed in the plant and ground section 110.20. Included in this section are specific requirements for facility layout that provide adequate separation of raw materials from finished product. This section identifies methods to avoid cross-contamination of food and its contact surfaces or packaging material. General maintenance and pest controls are discussed in the sanitary operations section 110.35. This section outlines proper sanitation of food contact surfaces and storage of cleaning materials, cleaned equipment, and utensils. The Sanitary Facilities and Control Section 110.37 addresses water supply, plumbing, sewage disposal, toilet facilities, hand washing facilities, and rubbish disposal. The Equipment and Utensils Section 110.40 states that all equipment should be designed and constructed so it is durable and easily cleanable. Food contact services should be smooth, non-porous, non-toxic, and should not contribute off odors or colors. Corrosion-resistant materials should be used in construction because rust is difficult to clean and allows for growth of microorganisms. Seams should be smooth and free of cracks or crevices. All equipment should be properly cleaned and maintained. Examples of acceptable equipment materials include some types of stainless steel, various plastics, and laminates. Some types of stainless steel can corrode. Stainless steel that can corrode is not acceptable for sprout production. It is very important that equipment and utensils be constructed of food grade materials. Not all items found in general hardware stores or variety stores are recognized food grade materials. If uncertain, contact the NSF International to verify whether or not a material is considered food grade. Utensils used in food production should meet the same criteria used for equipment. All equipment and utensils should be cleaned and sanitized daily or more frequently as needed to avoid product contamination. Information on cleaning and sanitation techniques for food contact surfaces, equipment, and utensils is provided later in this video. Cold storage compartments play an important role in keeping many types of foods safe but are also potential sources of contamination. All refrigerators used to store or hold food should be fitted with a thermometer that accurately indicates the temperature within the compartment. This indicator should have an automatic control for regulating temperature within the compartment or an alarm system to alert of equipment failure. Cold storage compartments should be of sufficient size to allow storage of food so that there is sufficient airflow for cooling, protection of the food from seepage, foodborne filth, and overhead condensation from fixtures, ducts, and pipes. Processes and Controls, Section 110.80, covers all operations in a food processing facility from receiving through preparation, packaging, and storage of food. This section stipulates that all operations in the receiving, inspecting, transporting, segregating, preparing, manufacturing, packaging, and storing of food should be conducted in accordance with adequate sanitation principles. The company should use appropriate quality controls to ensure that the food packaging materials they use are both suitable and safe, and that the food is suitable for human consumption. This is only a brief outline of the good manufacturing practices that are required for processed food, although some food, such as raw agricultural commodities, are currently exempt from GMPs. GMPs can be useful in helping sprouters control their process during all stages of sprout production. In addition, some states, including California, have incorporated the GMP regulations into the state health and safety codes, making them requirements for all foods produced in the state.